Most of the time, when you hear someone say that a game is different or original, it's usually because of some new feature that's been added. Dungeon Encounters might be the first time I'll be using those words to describe something that's been taken away. What's missing from this dungeon crawling RPG is the facade, both literal and figurative. This game is little more than what you're seeing here. A board game style map with numbers that correspond to certain events or encounters, and a character and combat screen that are much more spreadsheet than menu. Were this game to have that facade, it would be a tile based dungeon crawler like Labyrinth of Refrain, or my all-time favourite Digimon game, Digimon World 2. Compared to either of those games, Dungeon Encounters feels bare and naked. The frills on the dressing are missing, and there's only a thin veil between what the player sees and the coded script that goes on behind the scenes. Dungeon Encounters isn't leaking source code all over the place, of course, but it certainly takes the concept of minimalist game design and runs with it hard. This, unfortunately, makes the game pretty difficult to recommend, unless you're the type of person that can appreciate a game entirely for its mechanics. You see, modern gaming is as much about the spectacle and aesthetic as it is about mechanics and gameplay. Dungeon Encounters is almost entirely lacking in the former, and in many ways feels more like balancing an accounting spreadsheet in the middle of a game of Dungeons & Dragons. It's a shame that this will cause many players to turn their nose up at the game before the trailer has even finished because it's mechanically solid and does combine some of the better aspects of both RPGs and roguelites to make a weirdly successful gameplay loop. The premise, as vague as it is, is that you control adventurers from the academy and send them in teams of four into the dungeon below, descending to the bottom and fighting stronger and stronger monsters. If your team should fall, another team can be sent in until there are no characters able to be deployed from the academy. This ability to return to the beginning with the money that you had previously, but with characters that have gained none of that run's XP, gives the game its aforementioned roguelike feel. However, the fact is that if you have a higher level character waiting in the wings, you can easily retrieve a weaker party. What Dungeon Encounters gets right feels a lot like Darkest Dungeon, but with characters who aren't quite as broken and insane. The lack of the iconic art style and eldritch horrors are also noticeably absent, and Dungeon Encounters is also lacking a unique mechanic like the quirk system. There's also no permanent progression to the academy or the shops aside from unlocking new items, but this is based on progress rather than the choice of investment. Thus we come to where facade impacts gameplay. These creatures and characters are little more than data in some form of spreadsheet. While all characters in games are just data on the most basic level, Without the pretense that they aren't, it's difficult to feel anything other than frustration when your team dies. This isn't the same feeling as when you lose a major in the XCOM series, for example. There's no one particular class that each of the characters is better suited to, and outside of a thumbnail next to their name, these characters are lacking in a unique identity that would make you feel anything about them other than, you are an entity I control. As such, these characters never anchor themselves in the same way emotionally, and therefore a lot of the appeal is lost. Rather, a sense of tedium sets in when your allies die, as you're more likely to now have to trot out a weaker party down the same path you've just walked to retrieve your original party. Sure, you can use a lot of the money you've gained in the last run to give them powerful equipment to help, but it's still a lot of repetition. The layout of the floors doesn't change either, so if you're watching footage of me walking around a floor, you can boot the game yourself, go to that exact same floor, and see the exact same thing here. The enemies might be in different locations, but everything else is exactly the same. Combat in Dungeon Encounters is mechanically sound, but falls into the same minimalist attitude as the rest of the game. Each character, be it enemy or ally, has health points, physical defense points, and magical defense points. You have to break through one of these defenses to deal damage, which almost exclusively prevents the first unit that gets to move in battle from defeating an enemy. You need someone to break the defense, and then someone to smash through. It's this mechanic that's why the game can claim to prioritize thinking and strategy over straight up gameplay. They aren't particularly wrong in that regard, but it's perhaps a bolder claim than it ought to be. Each character can be equipped with any weapon or armor piece, and there are no stats or natural affinities for certain weapons or roles. These are only restricted by what gear you have available and what you equip on each character. Therefore, it's up to the player to create a viable group. As both magical and physical events will need breaking at some point, a balance of some kind must be struck within your party for combat to function properly. As you progress, other facets, like the ability to use ranged weapons and deal status effects, do come into play for both yourself and your enemies. As each character can do everything equally well, the only true difference is whether or not the player themselves has invested in items to buff their health or gear capacity. I mentioned earlier that it's incredibly difficult to recommend dungeon encounters because so much of the game's focus has been put onto the mechanics and how gameplay functions. You probably also need to be a fan of party-based RPGs and probably also turn-based JRPGs, and a veteran at both, to have any chance of jumping into this and not feeling the immense tedium that comes with it. The completionist in me sees 99 floors and a few thousand tiles to walk across. 
And that feels like a very achievable goal, but many people will just see an administrative checklist that feels like a chore. This game doesn't feel like a tech demo or a proof of concept, as many people have said, but it will almost certainly appear that way. Having to constantly associate numbers with gameplay functions and pull the information yourself from various lists will likely appeal to people who like the idea of logic trees, coding, or being the dungeon master. But to your average gamer, this is asking a little too much. I really liked Dungeon Encounters when I started playing, and as a 25 year veteran of the JRPG, I thought I was the target audience for this game. But even so, this was not an easy finish. I wasn't hitting a wall in terms of difficulty, it just started to feel like the obstacles that were put in front of me weren't worth trying to get past. What I was unlocking was just more of what I'd already done, without much of the psychological trickery that is often hidden in the aesthetic that other games use to hide their gameplay loops. I do like the idea here of putting gameplay mechanics at front and centre, as I've always been a champion of that as the primary focus of game design. Yet, it turns out, when push comes to shove, I'm just as shallow as everybody else. I don't think Dungeon Encounters is poor value, as there's certainly enough in the game to justify the $24.99 it currently is on Steam. Yet, for it to be a value to you, it really depends on what you want from your gaming experience. If you're looking for a game to chip away at, with a checklist to methodically work your way through, this is a solid recommendation. For what it's worth, I thought I fell into that camp, but unfortunately, I couldn't create the connection with these characters, and after a few ill-timed party wipes, I put the game down and admitted defeat. I don't regret buying it, because of what it taught me about myself today that wasn't true a few years ago. But this is certainly a tough game to recommend.